this morning, a controversial ordinance that would ban homeless encampments in certain areas of San Diego is now moving forward. Thank you for joining us. Time is now 6 a.m. I'm Nadia Iranpour. And I'm Chris Crow in for Eric Conard. And the proposal was actually approved by the city's Council Land Use and Housing Committee. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol is live downtown to explain what happens next and when this could become law. Dana Marie, what are you hearing? We know that that ordinance vote was passed three to one and now it heads to a full city council vote. Now those in favor say it's one step closer to creating a safer San Diego. Those opposed don't necessarily agree with this ordinance. San Diego Council members, they're moving forward with making it illegal to set up tents on those sidewalks, specifically in areas two blocks away from schools, homeless shelters, trolley tracks, transportation hubs, parks and waterways. Mayor Todd Gloria supports the ordinance and calls it an appropriate and necessary step to protect the health and safety of all San Diegans. He did go on to say if there are beds available, we expect people to use them. Everyone has to live by the rules. It's a civilized society and we have basic expectations for order and we will have it in this city. He says this ordinance will get us a step closer to doing that. Homeless advocate and director of lived experience advisors John Brady says the city has to do more to provide shelter and housing. He says we have more than 1700 people living on the streets downtown that are going to be evicted with no place as a result of this ordinance if it goes forward. It's incredibly expensive to operate these shelters. It's over $2,000 per person per month to have them there. Yes, we need more shelter space, but ultimately we've got to have a place to move people into. And he goes on to talk about how there's just a lack of affordable housing here in San Diego, and that's a big issue of what contributes to the homelessness. Now, in terms of the timeline, Mayor Todd Gloria says there's no necessarily, necessarily a timeline in terms of when that city council will do that vote. But if it does pass, Mayor Todd Gloria says it could become law by midsummer. I'm Dana Marie McNichol coming to you live from Harbor Island. Dana Marie, thank you for that update. And now if this ban does in fact pass, many people are asking where okay. will homeless people go? One ambitious plan would house hundreds of people at Balboa Park. The Lucky Duck Foundation and some city officials discussed putting up bridge shelters at an underutilized parking lot there near Balboa Park. The nonprofit says they're ready to be a collaborative partner with the city, but have not been given any timeline on when that might move forward. We know they're, they're researching several different sites. Um, uh, you know, beyond that, we're, we're here and ready to be an active and collaborative partner with them and uh, just, you know, want to accelerate their efforts. Well, the mayor's office says city officials are evaluating many different areas around San Diego where people who are homeless can legally and safely camp and then they would also get access to hygiene, other services, and a path to housing. Today, we will learn more about Mayor Todd Gloria's plan to address homelessness here. He will unveil his proposed budget for the 2024 fiscal year. The mayor's office says the $5 billion spending plan also prioritizes street repairs and public safety. Mayor Gloria will unveil this budget later on this morning. Now, if you live in El Cajon, tomorrow you have another chance to weigh in on the issue of homelessness. The city is hosting a series of town hall meetings to come up with solutions. Now, tomorrow's event will be at the Hillside Recreation Center from 1 to 3. Two more meetings are happening April 26th and May 4th. And right now, local detainment centers are back, packed after large groups of migrants crossed into the U.S. illegally this week. Border Patrol agents say that they detained a group of migrants, including children, yesterday morning as they made their way through the Tijuana River. Agents say the migrants from as far away as Ethiopia and Afghanistan climbed a fence on the southern side of the Tijuana River. Two groups of at least 100 people were detained in the same area this week. At new this morning, the United States and Mexico have agreed to intensify the fight against fentanyl. This deal comes after a meeting from both countries in Washington, D.C. happened yesterday. In recent weeks, the U.S. and Mex Mexico asked China to curb the shipment of precursor chemicals to prevent the production of fentanyl. Now the White House says it plans to use more sanctions to block drug traffickers access to the U.S. financial system. And also new this morning, the city of Minneapolis has agreed to pay nearly $9 million to two people who said former police officer Derek Chauvin pressed his knee onto their necks 
years before he killed George Floyd using the same tactic. Now we do want to warn you, the video is difficult to watch. I feel nice to you. Ow. <laughs> Both John Pope Jr. and Zoya Code are seen on police body cam video being handled with excessive force by Derek Chauvin in two separate incidents in 2017. Pope Jr., who was just 14 years old at the time, is seen being grabbed by Chauvin, hit with his flashlight, and then Chauvin kneels on his neck for 15 minutes during a domestic call. Pope Jr. was awarded $7.5 million in the settlement. Meanwhile, Minneapolis also agreed to pay code $1.3 million. As you see right here, this video shows Chauvin carrying her by the arms, dropping her head first, and then kneeling on her neck. Chauvin is serving more than 20 years on state and federal charges for Floyd's murder. Yeah, really tough to see that right now. California's drought has dwindled significantly. Take a look at this update this morning. The U.S. Drought Monitor reporting areas of the drought covered now less than 9% of the state. So just the lighter yellows that you see right there. That is quite a change. That number was 99% at the start of the water year. That was October 1st of the water year that was last year. So our winter here in California has of course been marked with several of these atmospheric rivers that have created significant amounts of rain. As all of us know for the state, this created a larger than normal snowpack. A big reason why we're now seeing this. So that's always a promising sign. Just 9% now of our state right now. Blooming wildflowers are popping up everywhere. All thanks to the wet winter weather. CBS 8 took a mini road trip across San Diego County to show you these vibrant orange and yellow colors. Look how beautiful these are. We found flowers in Santee, Lake Murray, Tijuana River Valley, and in Alpine. If you'd like to watch more video like this, we have it all for you on our website, cbs8.com. Click on the link to this story. I was just driving along the five, Evan, and yeah. all these giant, beautiful flowers were almost like going into the lanes. It was so cool. Yeah, to see. right. It's so <laughs> green, so luscious. You can tell uh, Mother Nature is very relieved with all the rain that we've had over the last couple months. We know it has come at a price, of course, but uh, you could see how we're starting off our Friday morning. Mostly dry conditions here as we kick off the day, as opposed to the wet conditions that we woke up to yesterday with just scattered showers and drizzle out there. Today we have the chance that we might pick up on a few stray quick moving spots of drizzle, but in general, it's just cloud cover that we have outside. And in fact, a lot of those clouds are already breaking apart, leading to a gorgeous start to our morning here. Uh, we are seeing that over the next couple hours, our temperatures are going to climb to the low 60s. We didn't make it there yesterday. 50s were our peak today. 61 along the coast, 62 inland. Mountains are only expected to make it into the 50s, but they have a more dramatic climb in afternoon highs between now and Sunday. Deserts are in the 70s, making it possibly to the 90s by the time we get into Sunday. Now the weekend along the coast is going to be really comfortable passing clouds out there. Partly cloudy conditions overall 63 on Saturday 65 along the coast on Sunday. And although we only make it to the mid 60s for the coastline inland, we are expected to see afternoon highs in the low 70s. So that will finally get us a little bit more relief on hand. Still, however, both of these afternoon highs for Saturday and Sunday, they may be comfortable, but they are still cooler than average. Warmer than average temperatures possible by the time we get into the later portion of next week. Here's onshore flow, still slightly onshore, especially up toward North County, but we do have a, a southerly component that's kind of tied into this. Weakening wind speeds and wind gusts are going to play in to what will be a calmer day overall. Wind advisory is now expired, but Mountains and deserts are still a bit breezy in some spots. Booker Hill, Julian Boulevard, all in the double digits as far as your wind gusts go right now. It's 6.09. Let's take a look at your border wait times as we kick off your morning. We want to show you what they're looking like according to the CBP website. Right now, the wait time is 140 minutes for the general line at the San Ysidro Port of Entry, 85 minutes for the general line at the Otay Mesa Port of Entry. You can head to cbs8.com slash traffic. It's got the latest on what road conditions look like across all of our major freeways here in San Diego County. Back to you.